Hi folks, welcome to this video on periodization. Now this is to do with training. Periodization is what, you know, all Olympic athletes, world championships, Commonwealth, Europeans, all those, you know, swimmers, athletics, rowers, people who've got to peak for a major event each season, they will all follow this process of periodization. Like I put there, it's structuring your training into blocks or cycles in order to peak for a major event. Olympics, Paralympics, World Championships, things like that. Don't get me wrong, some football, or, you know, footballers, rugby players, basketball players will have some element of this in their uh, training programme. But, you know, they've got to be match fit every week for a different game. Even, you know, NFL trying to peak for the Super Bowl. You, only two teams get to the Super Bowl, so there's no point in, you know, training your season to target that one weekend, that Sunday night. If this is about athletes who know there's an Olympic final or Olympic Games or something like that, and they are trying to peak for that event. So as I just said there, um, the macro, sorry, the periodization is aimed at breaking the year down into cycles, and there's three of them: macro cycle, meso, micro cycle. So the macro cycle is the long-term training goal, typically a full year, and you know, with the aim to peak for that major event. And that's broken down into meso cycles. And meso cycles, they are mid-term training goals, and the a meso cycle will last anywhere between four and sixteen weeks. And in that four and sixteen weeks, the aim is to develop a particular component of fitness, develop power, develop endurance, develop strength, develop flexibility. The more important that component of fitness is to your event, the longer that MESA cycle will be, the closer to 16 weeks it will be. The less important that component of fitness is to your event, the shorter that MESA cycle will be. And the MESA cycles themselves are broken down into micro cycles. And these are your short term training goals, typically one to three weeks. And the aim is to achieve an immediate goal, improve the sprint start, something like that. And microcycles are broken down into individual training sessions. If we look here down here, what we've got is preparation. I'm going to deal with all these in a minute. Preparation, competition, transition. But preparation is the push term for pre-season. Competition is you are now competing, and the transition period is your post-season, your post-season recovery. So this is just an image I've got. Now what we're seeing here is this season starts in November and ends in May. So it could be you know basketball season, something like that. That's what's going on there. So the full thing is the macro cycle. And what we've done is these parts here are your meso cycles. We've broken the year down into blocks where we're trying to build basic strength and build uh, maximum strength and convert that to power. I'm looking to maintain power. And then, you know, in the active season or the post season where we're doing active recovery, we're trying to develop basic strength again. And within that, there will be micro cycles, individual training weeks. So like I said, the macro cycle, whoops, sorry, the macro cycle is the full training year. And then each of these is a meso cycle between four and 16 weeks where you're aiming to develop a certain thing. And micro cycles will make up each meso cycle. Right, so a lot of writing on here, don't worry about it. This is just um, the way that we can break, you know, a period, or a period as a year to a greater extent as well. So we've got phases. The design of the macro, meso, micro cycles, as we've just seen, will depend on the sport, its season, and the major events to peak for. So let's look at athletics as an example. Now, athletics is a sport that has the following general time limits. Now, the season, outdoor season, will typically start in April time. Excuse my writing. Uh, and, you know, your major Olympics might be something like the back end of July, what we're aiming for there. And the season will be over by the beginning of September. So what we're looking at is uh, September through to, let's say, you know, uh, end of October, something like that, is where you will be doing the transition phase. Now, I know I'm going about these backwards, but, you know, hopefully it'll make sense by the time I get to the end of it. So your Olympic champions, things like that, people have been competing. By the time they get to September through till October, they will be in the transition phase, end of season, lots of active recovery, low aerobic training, cycling, swimming, you know, just letting the body and the brain repair and recuperate, ready for the start of pre-season training, which will probably start in around about November time. So let's say this is an athlete getting ready for the Rio 2016 Olympics. They're going to go into pre-season, the preparation phase, in November 
2015, so the year before the Olympics. And in that pre-season, they're going to build general and sports-specific fitness and skills. They're going to go through a period of general conditioning, base fitness is improved, aerobic endurance, flexibility, strength and conditioning, hard miles, you know, heavy weight sessions, things like that, flogging the body a little bit. But by the time they get to around about, let's say, December to January time, they're then going to move into phase two of pre-season, where they're going to reduce the volume of training. They're not going to hit the body as much, but they're going to increase the intensity. And, you know, use the phrase quality over quantity. They're going to do sports-specific fitness. So we are still in pre-season for all this amount of time, but we've done general conditioning in the first phase and then specific conditioning in the second phase and giving it more sports-specific focus. Now, this stage of pre-season, phase two, will run from January through to the start of the season in April. And the competition phase is the portion in for in-season. So you're now competing. Now, the aim here is to maintain fitness. You've built all your fitness from November through till you know, all the way through till April, sorry. You've had months and months of building fitness. Now it's maintaining it. Why? You should be at your peak now. And you need to be bringing in rest days and recovery days because you're now competing as well as training. So the training is to maintain the fitness. And you're also bringing in work on strategies, tactics, and perfecting certain skills and techniques. Now, this is going to run from about April through till May through to about June. Because what's going to happen now is we're going to get into phase four of the competition period. You know, well, phase Phase four in total, sorry, which is tapering two to three weeks before your Olympic final. So let's say the back week of July is your Olympic final or your round one of the Olympic Games for you. Two to three weeks before that, so the beginning of July, you are going to massively reduce your training to avoid injury in the build up to it. Now, people go, oh, two to three weeks and you're hardly going to train. You've been training from November the previous year up until this point. Two or three weeks, you are not going to lose a thing in terms of your fitness. But what you are going to do is potentially avoid injury in this time. And you're going to make sure you're not fatigued. You might have to go into a different time zone, you know, in order to where the Olympic Games are, things like that. What little training you do still do is at full-blown maximal intensity, though, just to make sure you are nice and sharp. So now you've won the Olympics and you'll do another few meets to where, you know, athletics meets to earn your money as the Olympic champion through August. And then by the time it gets to the end of August, early September, your season is finished again and you're back into the transition phase that we mentioned at the start. And you'll have, you know, end of season, post-season, active recovery until October again. And then you'll start your pre-season again in the November again. So it repeats. And next year, the focus might be the World Championships in July or the Commonwealth Games in July or the European Championships in July, something like that. So it's this breaking the year down with different focuses each each period. So this entire thing would be a macro cycle, this entire thing. And it's made up of pre-season, competition, uh, in-season, and the transition phase and the four phases. And then each of these phases will be made up of meso cycles, four to 16 weeks with a different focus for each block, develop endurance, power, strength, whatever it is. And then each of those meso cycles will be made up of micro cycles. And that's how the whole thing comes together to make up periodization. So you could get a short answer question on this, each of these phases and what the three M's are and things like that. Or you could get a big question about how an athlete uh, breaks their year down in order to peak for a major event. But that's everything to do with periodization. Hope you found this video useful, folks.